Hi everyone, I'm JK from SSW and today I'm going to show you SQLite in unit test using EF Core. Why should you use it and why should you consider using in-memory database for certain unit tests? So let's begin. So I have started with a simple uh, project. We have a persistent layer, we have the unit test and we have the web API. We're not going to touch the web APIs because we're interested in unit tests. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look into persistence layer first. So as you can see, the persistence layer have parents and children. And every parent has a child and has also a name. And every child has only a name. So this is just for demonstrating a few uh, issues with in-memory database and show you why would you need to use SQLite. So let's go to the uh, unit test. And first, let me uh, touch a little bit on the test base because it's going to be used for both projects. So in this test base, we have GetDB context. This DB context tries to create a DB context based on what we would like to use. So in this case, it can be either SQLite or in-memory database. The reason I want to do that is to quickly show you uh, what's the difference between SQLite and in-memory database and to show you that if I just flip the switch, the behavior is going to be different. And you can see here that the SQLite is actually in memory. It still means you have some features that you don't have with the in EF core in memory database, even though you would think, well, they're both in memory. So shouldn't they have the same features? Not really. So the next step is to just initialize the DB context based on the, the, the options. And here's the interesting part with the SQLite. So when you use SQLite, you have to create uh, a connection to it. Um, you don't have to do that for MS SQL. You don't have to do this for EF core in memory database. And it's essentially database to database type, uh, whether you need to do that or not. And then we ensure that the database is created. If you get with error, uh, errors when you're using SQLite, when you're doing ensure created or other operations, do check if you have uh, opened connection. And then we just return the DB context, easy. And we create, uh, we, we control whether we want to use a SQLite or not via use SQLite method. Easy, isn't it? So to test this and to give you a side-by-side -side comparison uh, on how this works, I'll first close all the tabs. I will open first the in-memory database tests and then open the SQLite tests and I'll put them side by side. Now I intentionally made all the code line I by the code, uh, code line numbers. So as you can see, this unit test is in the same code line as the right one. So we can just scroll through and see the code side by side. And the code, the both codes are the same except for the constructors where the SQLite uses the CAU SQLite. And to show you, to demonstrate you whether the unit test is going to be uh, successful or not, I'm going to use an awesome feature called live unit testing. And I'm going to start live unit testing for this one method, which you're going to see is going to fail. Sorry, be successful. And I will also include the live unit tests on this side as well. So what you're going to see that the left side and the right side is successful. On the left side, we have in-memory database. 
on the right side we have SQL light unit tests. Now this is easy and this gives us a little bit of visibility with whether the unit tests are passing or not and where they fail and why they fail and seeing them side by side helps us to maybe understand the cool differences between them. So let's switch to something a little bit more interesting. So here we have, we try to execute a SQL statement. We're using Dapper for that, but you could really use anything you like as long as they actually execute the SQL statement. And why would you like to do that? Well, you either need to run uh, a store procedure or the query in link becomes so complicated that it's actually more readable in SQL or even you go to a point where you no longer can use link to achieve what you want. So those are very complicated scenarios. We obviously don't have such a complicated scenario, so please excuse me for using such a simple uh, test. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to exclude all the unit tests prior and use only this one just to prove you the point that this unit test will fail because we are running SQL. So as you can see, the unit test fails uh, in this line and it never actually reaches this line. So we never get to a point where we could say, did we get one result? And if we click on this red icon, we can see that the exception we're getting is invalid operation exception. And relational specific methods can only be used when the context is using a relational database provider. So in-memory database provider is not a, a re relational database. But you might guess if I try to run the unit test on the right side, the SQLite unit tests, it's going to pass. And it's going to run all the lines of code and we can confirm that yes, we actually got only one result. Okay. so. Let's move on to a different example because you'll be thinking, well, I'm not using SQL, so I don't need SQLite, right? I can just use in-memory uh, database from EF Core and I'm good, right? Well, think again. So if you have a relation, a re relational database and you have constraints, how can you test those constraints if you don't have a relational database that checks the constraints? So let me show you. So when I run this unit test, what it's going to try to do is it's trying to create a parent with a child that does not exist. And what I would expect from uh, EF Core is to tell me, hey, you cannot save that. That child does not exist. But what we're getting here is, um, it's not actually throwing anything, it's just succeeding. And just to prove you the, that this is successful, I'm going to move the safe context outside the assert, which checks for the from exception and show you that it actually passes this line. As you can see, this line was successfully ran, uh, this line successfully ran, and it went all the way down to asserting whether the parents are empty or not, which essentially means it saved the parent when it shouldn't. And when I delete this line and go back and revert this line, you will see that this line is never uh, executed because we didn't get the exception we wanted. So if we go on the right side, the SQL uh, unit test, SQLite unit test, 
you'll see that it is actually throwing an exception when trying to save uh, the context as well as the parents list the the number of parents is still zero so it didn't save the parent it just didn't it did not only fail the save changes it also didn't change the db context in any way because it, the save changes failed so that's something you would expect for from a relational database now that's all good there are some other benefits to SQLite, some other disadvantages, uh, disadvantages of SQLite. But the biggest reason why you shouldn't use SQLite and why should you consider uh, doing something similar that I do, essentially switching between SQLite and in-memory database, is performance. Now let me demonstrate this line and just for curiosity I will demonstrate you with very few cycles and I'll run them side by side and I'll show you what I mean with performance issues so this unit has ran 200 milliseconds now this is not really a good performance uh, test good performance that should have been repeated multiple times and then check the, um, the medium and stuff like that. But this gives us a ballpark on how um, executing the number of actions in SQLite and in memory database impacts the performance. And as you have seen here, we have 200 milliseconds here we have about 300 milliseconds. So it's 100 milliseconds, not too bad. Now, remember you have hundreds of unit tests and you're probably running a lot more than just hundreds of uh, SQL uh, statements. You might be running thousands of SQL statements and you need to run them continuously if you're using live unit tests. And what then, realized is when you have a seeding database with thousands of uh, elements you will realize that the the time to generate all that stuff takes much longer in sqlite than in me in memory database and just to, sh to prove you the point i'm going to go back running ten thousand queries and as you can see the the in-memory database has already completed while the SQLite took a bit longer and just to give you a little bit more dramatic pause here we have 900 milliseconds and over here we have three seconds so if I add another zero there exists a possibility that the SQLite unit test will not complete because it's going to time out the unit test which means that in that case you would actually have to use in-memory database so this kind of summarizes why would you want to use a SQLite uh, uh, database provider for the unit tests instead of in-memory database uh, from EF Core Although you should always consider to use them both depending on the scenarios and maybe you don't even need SQLite. You should consider that for yourself but my recommendation is to use them both depending on the scenario you want to test. And that's all. Thank you for watching.